so I'm leaving you. And, uh, but I wanted to leave you uh, today with this event on promotion, because I have invested a lot of energy on having an interesting file. And uh, so I'm happy that my, gla my last event as, as director is, is with you on promotion. Um, it's very nice to see the meeting room fully booked. Uh, that means that we are doing something attractive to you. So I'm going to leave you just with two messages because I have to run to the, to the Parliament, European Parliament now. And, and the first thing I want to say to you, to the stakeholders, to the users of these regulations, is that, you know, last year uh, we had already a, a, a high amount of applications and roughly speaking, uh, um, we had a, like a 30% success rate and 70% failure. But, but uh, uh, from the winners, 50% are newcomers, which is a very good sign for us that you don't need to be a veteran to win uh, a competition in the Commission. Also, newcomers are entitled to get the money. So uh, if, if last year competition was tough, this year competition risks being even higher because we are putting more tape. So my, my friendly suggestion to all of you is please listen carefully to the debates today. Listen to the input that my colleagues are going to give you. Listen also to the success stories, because on purpose we are presenting this afternoon some success stories of, of people that we believe are presenting nice projects. And please be innovative. Be innovative. Do not do cut and paste uh, projects and be, be innovative, because we like innovation. And, and, uh, and my last comment would be rather for my staff, not for you. Because I can say whatever I want now. I'm going to, I'm going to the par parliament, so I'm totally free to say whatever I want. And what I wanted to tell to my staff is that uh, one of the reasons why this policy has been so successful, and I look at this room, and I'm, I'm pleased to see this meeting room, it's because since day one when I came here, I tried to make this policy business-oriented. My duty, and I wanted my people to follow that, is to facilitate your life not to complicate your life. And I think we have managed to educate my staff to be service-oriented. So not looking at our own comfort zone, but rather looking to your comfort. That does not mean that we have to listen and to follow whatever you suggest, because sometimes you make suggestions that we cannot follow, because they are illegal or arbitrary whatsoever. But I educated my team to be business-oriented and service-oriented, and I hope that when I will leave, please, colleagues, um, follow this political line and be business-oriented. I'm really sorry I have to rush now with the president. And again, it was very nice uh, working with you those uh, two and a half years. And you know you have a friend now at the top of the European Parliament. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Diego, and good luck in your new function as uh, the head of cabinet of President uh, Tajani. We are very proud of you, Thank so, you um, and see you Thank later you. on today. <laughs> So with, with the words of Diego, we are going to start the, the day. Um, and I can only confirm that we have been educated to be uh, service-oriented towards you, towards uh, other stakeholders. And this is a heritage that we are going to, to take uh, very, very seriously. Um, I'm Lene Nesseger. I'm head of unit uh, of the, the External Communication and Promotion Unit. Yeah. Some of you may know me, I uh, took over the promotion file 1st of October last year and uh, we had a big reorganization in DG Agri and we merged external communication and promotion per 1st of January this year. Um, today um, we have uh, a long day in front of us. Uh, we will have some few housekeeping rules. I want to stress there's no interpretation. Everything is in English today. I hope that this is okay with you. Um, also, what is important it is that you have your agendas behind your badges, so you will not get lost as to where we are in the program. You can just turn your badge. Um, what you also should be aware of, it is that uh, the morning session is web-streamed. Uh, 
Uh, as Diego mentioned, we have a listening room if there are still participants coming, because it seems to be pretty full now. Uh, we will not have uh, web streaming during the networking event this afternoon, for obvious reasons. This is not really possible, because you are going to, to work in groups. Um, then, what we are going to do is that I will go to um, present the annual work program 2017. And then Alexandra Misolosek, who is the head of unit of the promotion unit in Shafia, the commission's agency, during the coffee break. And then we start with, uh, with other items, such as the model grant agreement. <coughs> but I will get started, slowly but surely. I'm going to think over here, because I prefer standing up when I speak. Here we go. So, well, we have, as you know, since the new system, yearly work programs uh, on promotion. And this is based on our basic act that we uh, adopted in 2014 that is applicable as from 1st of December 2015. We also um, adopted um, implementing rules in a delegated regulation and implementing regulation that you are probably all aware of. Um, and then annually, as I mentioned, we have the work program and we have the calls for proposals. The work program is really um, a tool that aims at defining the promotion strategy for the question. So it is in order to ensure that we have a dynamic uh, promotion policy and a policy that also aligns with the need of, sec of the sector. We talk about the agricultural sector here, um, agricultural products. And there are some priorities in the work program that we, uh, we define, but we have sometimes some fl flexibility, but not a lot. And since it is adopted annually, well, what we are doing it is that we look at, for instance, now when we have to start the exercise 2018, we look at what have, have we this year for 2017, how can we improve? So this is the, um, the uh, adaptation. Um, so it is really in order to set out the operational objectives, operational priorities, look at what kind of results do we want to achieve here? Um, and we also look at the financing plan uh, in, the, in the work program. So how we, did we draft it, um, the one for 2017 that you have today? Um, well, of course, we looked at the objectives of the regulation, uh, which is to inc increase the number of activities aimed at third countries where there is the highest potential of growth. This is important. We want to export our, our products. We look at the internal market. The purpose is here to inform consumers about the high standards of EU, of EU products and, in particular, about our quality logos. For third countries, we, we do um, a macro in the economic analysis on projected increase for imports uh, for selected uh, scope of products that are suitable for inclusion in, um, in our promotion programs on existing or on emerging markets. And we also do a policy evaluation on uh, the FTA member states uh, in relation to the meetings that we have in the management committee. There will be one in June. We have contributions from stakeholders also in order to draft our um, work program. And uh, the stakeholders, they are consulted via the civil dialogue groups. And then we, uh, of course, as I mentioned before, we look at what is our gained experience. Now we are in the second year of implementation of this new promotion policy. So of course we look at what worked well in the past, what worked less well, and then we take really what is working quite well. So the structure of our work program 2017, it is that we have, of course, the, the grants. This is the co-financing of the programs, um, which is both the simple and the multi. We have uh, 133 million euros 
this year. This is quite a lot. You know, it's going to increase. We're going to 200 million euros in 2020. And then we have um, what we call procurement, which are taken on the Commission's initiative carried out by Shafir. We are working so closely with Shafir because they are really the, um, the implementing agency for us. And there we have 9.5 uh, million euros. This is, for instance, high-level missions, own campaigns in third countries. Um, in the Annex, Annex 2, in the work program, we have the criteria for the financial contribution to the simple programs. Here we talk about the eligibility, exclusion, selection, and award criteria. And we also have in the, the Annex 3, we have uh, the criteria for the multi-programs as well. Um, then, if we look at the simple programs only now, what kind of topics do we have? Well, we have made a distinction between internal market and in third countries. So you have in the internal market, you have, of course, the quality schemes. Uh, as topic one, you have, and I will show you later on, uh, the budget breakdown. We have the generic schemes, which is about how we produce uh, agricultural products in a safe manner, in a sustainable manner sometimes. We're going towards Asia with China, Japan, South uh, Korea, Taiwan, Southeast Asia and India. You have the topic four, which is on the other side. <laughs> Uh, which is the United States, Canada, and Mexico. Then you have uh, a topic five, which is going south, which is Africa, Middle East, and Turkey. And then you have other regions, which can be all kinds of regions, all kinds of countries in the world. You have a specific topic seven, linked to dairy and pig meat, um, which also has to be seen in the light of the Russian ban uh, and the problems that the pig meat and the um, dairy market uh, have had. It's going better now. And of course, the same goes for beef. Then we have something uh, which is um, uh, not uh, subject to the calls that Alexandra will, will talk to you about now. It is the market disturbance clause. We can make, if there is a market disturbance, a specific call. And then for the multi-programs, um, there we have three topics. They are called ABC. And there you have uh, one topic, which is uh, programs to increase the awareness of su sustainable agriculture and the role of agriculture for climate action on the internal market. It's only on the internal market, this one there. You have the information of EU quality schemes, both on the internal and the third country markets. And then you have the topic C, which is about programs that will highlight the specific features of agricultural methods in the Union and the characteristics of EU agri-food products, also both internal and in third country markets. Um, For the programs, some, some new elements, um, of course, more money compared to 2016. There we had 69 million euros. Now we have 90 million euros for simple um, For the internal market, as such, we have uh, emphasis put on the quality schemes and also the generic promotion about how we produce our agri food products, um, and here we have in total 22.5 million euros, which is quite a lot as well huh? for the internal market. And then if we look at the new elements for, for third countries, well, I spoke about that we had the specific envelopes for dairy and pork, um, which is 12.6 million euros. Um, and we have the specific beef promotion, which is in third countries, which is 4 million euros. So these are specific, uh, specific loads. And then in relation to the regions, you see them as before. Um, we have, compared to last year, we have a bit merged 
the, the regional approach, so we don't have so many specific topics for the regions because it makes it easier to handle uh, when you when you apply. See, we have three topics. The new element here, it is really um, the idea, the topic A, of uh, having programs that um, aim at increasing the awareness of uh, sustainable agriculture and the role of uh, the agri-food sector for climate action on the internal market. This is really something very new. Um, and I can only invite you to look uh, carefully into the call uh, of the multi and see how we have uh, described um, this, uh, this topic and to see if, if you have potential um, projects that will fit into that category. It's a challenge to, 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 to send a program that will fit into that category, but um, we thought that it was really worth to do uh, so. And uh, let's see when we are and doing the evaluation and when we will have to decide on, on this topic, what is going to come out of it. It's going to be very interesting. What is important for you to know, it is that we have 15.05 million euros so far, um, for the internal market for this topic here. And it's not for organic, not for organic at all. So, um, so that's going to be, as I said before, really a challenge to, to do this, uh, this topic. Then I mentioned that we have a topic which is on um, the serious market disturbance, loss of consumer confidence, or if there are specific problems. And we have here 4.5 million euros. If they are not used, um, then this, they are going to be reallocated to topic seven, which is on the dairy and the pig meat products in third countries. What is important for you to know, it is that we need to have a situation of market disturbance that has a European dimension. Um, I think that today uh, it may not be so obvious to see where we have such candidates. But still to be seen, things can be moving quite fast in the agricultural sector. So you have to know that this is a possibility that we have to launch such a call, um, which covers all kinds of agricultural products, but there has to be a market disturbance, which is in line with when we define the certain in the single market organization or the common market organization. Um, and this crisis call has to be complementary to the exceptional measures that may be taken by the market organization. So uh, it is a possibility we have to help a sector in, uh, in need and to restore consumer confidence. So then I have a slide on allocation of leftover budget. Um, and what is happening? It is that the main, uh, the total of the remaining foreseen amount for free topics on the internal market. So you see we have some kind of flexibility here. Um, we do take the same approach for third country uh, proposals. And if the amount foreseen is still not exhausted, then the, the remaining amounts for both internal market and third countries shall be merged and assigned to projects with the highest quality score, irrespective of the priority and topic for which they have applied. So you see, we really try to use up the total budget available, which is important to, for you to know. We don't talk here about any saving rounds. We really try to do what we can to, to, uh, to spend the money. With regard to the multi-programs, then the principle is again that the total of the remaining foreseen amount for all three topics shall be merged and assigned to projects with the highest quality score, irrespective of the topic for which they have applied. These are the principles. Of course, the PowerPoint presentation is going to be available afterwards, so you, you will have it. Huh? So then you can read carefully what is uh, written here. Coming to um, procurement. Well, this is the 9.5 million euros that that the Commission with Shafia can spend. Um, and what do we do here? Well, we, uh, we spend 
the money primarily in uh, third countries. That's uh, with that money we are making the high-level missions. As you know, the commissioner, he has been to uh, Colombia and Mexico, China, Japan, uh, to Vietnam, Singapore, and so on and so forth in 2016. Extremely interesting um, high-level missions with a very good outcome. Um, we are going to do more uh, because we believe that this is important for the sector to have the support of the, the commissioner to export agricultural products uh, of the EU in third countries. So I can already announce, but you probably know that we are going to end September, beginning of October, most likely, we are going to Iran and Saudi Arabia, but more information will come on that. So um, in relation to, just in relation to, to, to Canada, well, it will be in the context of the, the big fair in, uh, in Toronto. Um, what we also do, it is that we organize, um, organize the organization of seminars on, uh, on SPS, for instance. This is also a tool that we have available in order to, in order to explain how they are produced. Um, and then, of course, we have uh, the possibility to support under that, uh, that envelope technical support services. We have the experts uh, who help us in evaluating our, the proposals that you will send to us in relation to the calls. So it is a, a very useful envelope for, for us in order to, to get the work to be done in a proper manner, but also really to have this kind of, of high-level events that provides a lot of visibility to, um, to the EU agricultural products. And here you have the interesting breakdown of the 2017 budget. As I mentioned before, you'll, you'll have the PowerPoint presentation afterwards. Um, it is in, um, in percentage and with, with the figures, as, as you can see. Um, and I have always, well, already mentioned the increase of the budget. We will, at the very end of this, uh, this period, uh, have 200 million euros available. So it's going to increase every year. It is a real positive policy uh, compared to other policies of, uh, of the Commission because we're really here in a situation where we seek to help the agricultural sector. So that was all from my side. You know our logo. Enjoy, it's from Europe. Um, that is a logo that we will continue to use because it's working quite well. It starts to be known by, uh, by stakeholders, by consumers, which is very important for us. You know our website and the website of Shafir. You can find much more information there. Andra, who will explain you more about the calls 2017, and then we'll take questions afterwards. Thank you. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. It's a pleasure to be here this morning to present you more details about this year's calls for proposals. Uh, my name is Alexandra Metsiloshek. I work as a head of unit um, for promotion of agriculture products at the Executive Agency for Consumers, Health, uh, Agriculture and Food in Luxembourg. Uh, the role of our executive agency in relation to implementation of the promotion policy is to publish the calls for proposals based on the work program defined by the Commission. Uh, during the submission period, we are offering a help desk uh, to potential applicants. We are evaluating uh, the proposals which are submitted and um, afterwards we are managing the implementation of multi uh, programs while the uh, simple programs are still managed uh, by the competent national authorities. Um, so the objective of my presentation today um, is to give you some tips on uh, how to present a successful proposal, so how to increase your chances of uh, getting funding. Um, I will talk about uh, where to find uh, all the information you need in relation to this year's goals. Then I will discuss more in detail what are the goals. And finally, I will share with you some lessons learned during the 2016 
uh, wave of, of submission. So as you know, uh, on the 12th of January, this online submission of proposals. And uh, one important day to keep in mind is the 20th of April this year, five o'clock uh, in the afternoon. This is the last moment um, uh, that you, you have to submit your proposals. Uh, five minutes later, unfortunately, the system will not accept it. So a date to keep in mind. Uh, let's take a look where you can find all the information you need for, uh, to prepare your, your proposal for submission. So first of all, there is, of course, the, our website, uh, but then another important uh, link where uh, the actual submission is taking place, and that is the participant portal of research and innovation. On this slide, you can see uh, how the entry page uh, of that portal looks like. So look for Enjoy It's From Europe logo, promotion of agriculture products, and you will find um, the entry page for submission to both multi and simple call. Uh, of course, you have um, a large um, uh, set of guidance documents available to you. So first of all, there is a guide for applicants, which covers questions such as how to use the IT submission tool. Um, in the guide for applicants, um, you will find the templates for your proposals, templates also for all uh, mandatory annexes. And um, what is very important, also you will find a detailed description of award criteria. And I will come back uh, to this question uh, later in my presentation. Uh, furthermore, on our website, you will also find a set of frequently asked questions with respect to what was available last year. So I invite you to uh, check those frequently asked questions again. Um, then on the participant portal, you will find the frequently asked questions which guide you uh, through the submission tool. And there is also IT help desk available in, in case you have any technical problems uh, during the submission. Um, during, um, at, uh, following the last uh, su submission uh, in 2016, we have carried out a survey uh, with all those that submitted applications. And the survey indicated that you were quite satisfied, either very satisfied or satisfied uh, with the submission system. In case it was user friendly that, and that you didn't have. Um, difficulties uh, submitting your proposal online. Um, as I said, there is a step-by-step -step guide in our guide for applicants and for any further information more of technical nature, you can always uh, search for the answer on the participant portal. Then another possibility for those who are preparing simple programs, uh, you can also contact your competent national authorities. Um, they are the entities who are going to, with whom you are going to sign the grant agreement so they can help you also understand uh, the rules. Um, uh, the contact details are indicated in the call for proposals. And what uh, we are preparing this year uh, for the coming weeks, February and in March, we are preparing two webinars that will focus on aspects of proposals which are usually uh, challenges for, for s some of the applicants. Um, so we have chosen two topics. One is uh, how to set a good communication strategy uh, for your campaign. And the second one will concentrate on how to set objectives, indicators, and how to evaluate the results uh, of your campaign. Um, as you know, um, if you look at the award criteria, both are very important and contribute to uh, the quality score that uh, you are going to uh, get during the evaluation of the quality of your proposal. Um, but first of all, um, just a reminder of all the, uh, of, of, uh, all the regulation that uh, constitute our legal base. Of course, there is Regulation 1144, uh, our basic act, uh, supplemented by the delegated and implementing regulation, um, where you will have found all the rules on which the calls themselves are, are based. Um, further reading, the annual work program that was just presented uh, by my colleague Lene, as well as the model grant agreement, so which defines your 
um, rights and obligations once uh, your program has been approved. Uh, uh, it exists for both simple and multi-programs, for both mono-beneficiaries and multi-beneficiaries grants, and of course the simple uh, version for simple programs is translated in Russian. Let's take a look into at this year's course conditions. First of all, you will have to make sure that your organization is eligible to submit a proposal um, under the course. You will have to comply um, with conditions stipulated in the Basic Act. Uh, so we have four different types of eligible proposing organizations. As you know, these are um, trade and intra-trade organizations representative either on the national level or on the EU level. Uh, you can apply as a producer organization or association of producer organizations recognized uh, in your member, Article 1.1 and Article 2 of Regulation 11.29. So <coughs> these conditions, they are listed uh, in detail also in the calls for proposals. Um, what is the difference between simple and multi-programs? So uh, if you are submitting your proposal on your own or with other applicants from the same member state, you can apply for a simple program. And if you are so applicants from other member states or if, he, if you are an organization which is representative on the un union level, then you will submit a multi-program. And of course, we only accept applications from entities which are established in EU member states. The firm of the call uh, provides uh, conditions for on which activities are eligible. So first of all, uh, your proposal has to fit within the um, priority topic, which is announced uh, in the work program and uh, uh, in the previous I just uh, provided you a list of um, those priority topics which are announced in the call. Um, then your proposal needs to cover products or schemes which are eligible for promotion. And these are listed in Article 5 uh, of Regulation 1144. So it has to be either a program, uh, a product which is listed in Annex 1 uh, to the Treaty on the Functioning of the European Union, uh, except for tobacco. It can be one of the process products which is listed in the Annex to Regulation 1144, or um, it could be also spirits with a geographical indication. There are some f additional conditions that apply to products such as wine, um, fisheries and aquaculture products, which have to give, be combined uh, with other eligible products in a basket. Um, then, the next condition, your proposal must have a union dimension both in terms of messages and impact. So your campaign needs to have a union message and you will have to demonstrate that the impact um, of the campaign uh, will have a union dimension. I will get back to that point also in one of the later slides. Then for simple programs, um, we, there are some further conditions that um, need to be fulfilled. And that is that the simple program needs to be implemented in a member state different than the member state of the applicant. So either you have to go to another member state or if you are carrying uh, the action in your own member state, you will have to uh, have activities also uh, with messages on proper dietary practices. So in these two cases, uh, you can implement the campaign only in your own member state. Then, the next obligation is to implement your program through implementing bodies, uh, which <coughs> have to be selected through a competitive procedure. You also have the possibility to implement part of the program yourself, but in that case, you will have to ensure that the costs uh, are not in excess of normal market rates and you will have to demonstrate that you have at least three year experience with implementing similar promotional measures. In case you intend to 
use messages on, on impact of consumption of your product on health, you will have to fulfill conditions which are stipulated in Regulation 1831, meaning that uh, this uh, message on impact on health has to either, uh, you can either use a message uh, which is um, already uh, included in the Annex to the Health Claims Directive, or uh, have a message which is accepted by the competent authorities in the member state uh, where you are carrying out the activities, or if it's a third country, then to the competent authorities of the third country in question. Uh, you also know that there are certain conditions in case you wish to promote brands or mention origin of your product. There as well, uh, you will have to comply with conditions that are stipulated in Regulation 1131. What activities which you can carry out, uh, out in the context of a promotional program? Um, so the call provides an indicative list of activities. So this is not a comprehensive list. You could also usual uh, the most frequent activities uh, that are organized in the context of uh, promotional programs. So for example, management of the project, this is basically the coordination between uh, the different applicants and uh, the member state or um, the agency, and also with your implementing bodies, then uh, you can plan public relations activities, advertising, um, online activities, social media campaigns, uh, events, different types of events, such as B2B events, seminars, workshops, uh, trade fair, uh, participation, uh, and uh, point of sales activities such as tasting days or advertising in uh, retailers publications. So this is just an indicative list. We are free. Next, the criteria that I uh, listed uh, now uh, refer to eligibility criteria. We have a second set of criteria that are called exclusion criteria. Those are situations uh, under which um, you cannot submit uh, a proposal. So if your organization is bankrupt, if it's um, in breach of uh, obligations relating to payment or taxes or social security and also, there, there is a whole list of situations um, for which you will have to uh, submit a declaration on honor that your organization is not in one of these situations. Otherwise, it is excluded uh, from participation in the call. The next set of criteria is called selection criteria, and they relate to your financial capacity as well as to the operational capacity um, of the applicant. So under financial capacity, what do we uh, evaluate here? Uh, you will need to demonstrate that you have a stable and sufficient sources of funding um, to be able to implement um, the proposed program <laughs> and to participate in its funding. Um, this check is not performed with an audit report, which is produced by an approved external auditor who is going to certify your accounts. Uh, and the supporting documents we are asking for, we are asking you for a copy of your annual accounts for the last accounting year which has been closed, and also a filled in financial viability form. We are inviting you to carry out a self-check of financial viability on the participant portal, and in case uh, that if such check indicates that your financial uh, capacity is weak. Uh, you should not be discouraged from presenting the proposal. We are just asking you to explain to us how do you intend to ensure the financing throughout the period of implementation of the program. So you have the possibility, for example, to receive financial contributions from your members uh, to provide uh, the sufficient funding uh, for uh, during the lifetime of the program. So as I said, the second selection criterion is called operational capacity. You will have to demonstrate that uh, you have the professional competencies and qualifications to complete uh, the program. 
uh, if you are submitting a simple program and if you intend to implement part of the activities on your own, you have to prove that you have at least three years experience in implementing similar measures. And as supporting documents, we are asking for CVs of your staff and uh, an activity report um, where we could check that uh, those conditions are fulfilled. <laughs> Now coming to award criteria. So this is the most important um, set of criteria which I'm inviting selection criteria. You are in fact entering into competition with other proposals and this competition is based of course on, on quality and what define, defines quality uh, are the scores that you are going to receive based on those award criteria. So we have four main award criteria. They are here, you they are um, described in more detail, but in the guide of, uh, for applicants, you will find a document which analyzes those uh, criteria and sub-criteria even in further detail. This is the same document that our evaluators are using during the assessment of quality of your proposals. So it is extremely important that you check uh, once you have drafted your proposal, that you are correctly addressing each and every experience of criteria, because this could help you identify the, if there is a potential weakness in your proposals, if there are aspects which you have thought that our evaluators are going to look for. So this is really an important piece of advice that I would like to give you. Please study in detail uh, the award criteria and also um, the explanation provided in the guide for applicants. Um, because the, the guide of, for applicants will also help you with certain questions um, that are listed for each section of your proposal. Uh, and these questions help you address uh, those award criteria. Uh, so just to go quickly uh, through the points that we are assessing during the evaluation. So under the union dimension, as well as the objectives and expected results announced on the, the priority topic for which you are competing. Then we are looking at the union message of your campaign and also at its potential impact at union level. And then the second set of criteria is called technical quality. Here we expect you to uh, present a relevant market analysis. Um, based on this market analysis, you will develop objectives uh, for your program and we are going to look if the, if it's the strategy are in line with this market analysis and with the objective set. We are also going to look at the key messages of your proposal. Um, then we are going to test uh, with objectives and the strategies that, that you have set. We are looking at the communication mix uh, that, that you have chosen and if also if there is a synergy between different activities. Of course, you will have to also describe in detail those activities as well as the budget uh, which is related to each of them. And finally, um, we are uh, looking for a solid e uh, evaluation methodology and indicators uh, that you should set in advance. The third award criterion refers to the management quality. So here we are asking you to describe the project organization and management stru uh, structure, and of course not to forget any mechanisms you have to put in place to ensure the quality control and also uh, to manage the risks which are related to, to a particular case. And uh, finally, uh, the award criterion on cost effectiveness, um, please indicate and also uh, justify what is the expected return on investment for a project then the evaluators are going to look also at the split of the budget in relation to different uh, objectives and the scope of the activities. Uh, they are checking um, the estimated costs with the deliverables, so with the physical output um, of, the, of the program uh, that you are planning. And the four award criteria along with the maximum number of points that you can get for each one of them. So in total, 100 points, but for each criterion, there is also a threshold. What does it mean? This means that for each of those four criteria, you need to get a score which is at least equal to the threshold. If, for example, 
you get for cost effectiveness only 15 points. This means that your proposal will be rejected because its quality score for co cost effectiveness is below the threshold. So it is not sufficient only to get 62 points, but you have to be above the threshold for each of the award criteria. So based um, on the evaluation of the award criteria, we are going to establish a ranked list for each topic indicated in the call. The proposals, of course, will be ranked according to for each topic indicated in the call. The proposals, of course, will be ranked according to the quality score they are receiving during evaluation. Uh, they are going to be sorted in descending order of points. Points are highest uh, on the rank list, up to the limit of the available budget. So if there is, it for your topic in question, if there is high competition, it is not sufficient for you to get a pass score uh, for quality. You will have to ensure that you are high in the ranking uh, in order to, uh, to get chances to get funding. Uh, it could happen in case there is a very high, compet high competition in the topic that you have chosen that uh, you are put on the rank on the reserve list. In this case, you could receive funding in, in case there is additional budget that becomes available. And those uh, who fulfill the either eligibility election or exclusion criteria will be rejected as well as any proposal that is below the threshold for some of the award criteria. A couple of practical uh, details. What is the languages regime? Uh, you know that the call text but for applicants for simple programs is also available in all official EU languages. Uh, the guide for multi-programs is available in English only. And as for the submission of your proposals, uh, for the simple proposals, you are invited to submit the proposal in the language of your member state. Uh, unless your member state has indicated that they ex accept to sign grant agreements based on a proposal in English. Uh, you can see below the link uh, to the list of competent uh, national authorities where it is indicated whether your member state accepts signing uh, grant agreements based on technical proposal in English. Um, in case you are submitting your proposal in the language of the member state, we kindly ask you to provide us an English translation, but only for the technical part uh, of your proposal. Uh, this is needed to facilitate um, the work of external evaluators because they are uh, of uh, all the different member states, and we have minimum three external experts timetable we are looking at, so the 20th of April, the submission deadline, you can expect uh, to receive information on the outcome uh, in the month of October or when the commission decision uh, uh, determining which simple programs are accepted and rejected is going to be adopted. So uh, immediately after the adoption of the commission decision, if you are submitting a simple program, the member state is going to inform you of the outcome. They are also going to send you a full evaluation report with comments and scores so you can uh, analyze in detail what, uh, what were the strengths and weaknesses of, of your proposal. In case you are rejected, this will allow you to improve your proposals for, for the next round. Uh, within three months, the grant agreements need to be signed, so we are looking at um, the 1st of January or 1st of February approximately for, for the start uh, of implementation. A similar timetable for multi-programs, so you can expect to be informed towards the end of October of the outcome. What will happen after submission? Uh, we will contact you only in case that there are some issues that need to be clarified regarding your to be contacted by the research executive agency uh, who will validate your legal entity, so prior to signature of the grant agreements, and they will validate, uh, check also your financial capacity. As I said, you will receive an evaluation report uh, with all the details on uh, 
reasons for rejection if it is rejected for other uh, reasons. And of course, if you are successful, you would be invited uh, to make minor adjustments to your proposal if needed based on the comments uh, expressed by the evaluators. Let's quickly take a look at the lessons learned from last year's call. So on this slide, you can see the main reasons, the most frequent reasons for rejection of proposals. So we have received many proposals where the applicants themselves were not eligible um, or their organizations were not representative for the product or sector which is promoted. Unfortunately, here we do not have much flexibility. Uh, you will have to check uh, that your organization fulfills the conditions on eligibility and representativeness stipulated in our legal base. Um, then please pay attention also that the products and schemes you are promoting are eligible. Uh, for example, wine, in case of simple programs, has to be combined with other eligible products, otherwise uh, you can, your, your proposal will not be considered as eligible. Um, it happened also. And finally, uh, we received proposals which were not of significant scale, so unfortunately we could not consider them uh, as, as eligible. Um, looking at the quality of proposals, here you can see a list of issues that were most frequently um, emphasized by the experts as weak points. So um, many times uh, the programs do not define well what is their objective. Uh, they do not uh, define well what are the activities or deliverables uh, that, that are planned. Uh, there is no union message, so very important point to keep in mind. Um, also, uh, as one of the award criteria relates to organization and risk management, it is important to desc describe uh, those elements as well. Uh, the absence of evaluation methodology is another potential weak point. And finally, poor cost effectiveness. So please make sure that uh, the budget is also proportional to uh, the scope of the action that you are proposing. Final advice from my, my side, so please read carefully the call text. Uh, you have a large set of frequently asked questions you can refer to. And ask yourself, first of all, is my organization eligible? Uh, and does my proposal correspond to the objectives uh, of the topic and the call? And am I complying with all the call con conditions? Then the second advice would be to follow closely the guide for applicants because it's been designed to help you sufficiently describe. And the final advice is not to wait for the last minute before submitting your proposal because you could have a technical problem, you could have a power cut, and if you are late five minutes, unfortunately the system will not uh, accept your proposal. So please start uploading the supporting documents and um, basic version of your proposal at least a few days before the deadline, you always have the possibility to upload the final version uh, at a later stage. In case of question, our help desk is, is available by email or phone every working day and uh, my invitation is also to check our website, follow us on social media, hopefully this will help you prepare a solid proposal and I wish you good luck.